Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time for a very special series that is hopefully not gonna run for too long because the longer the series runs, that means the longer it took me to actually fix my problem. It would also mean that we cannot load up any gameplay footage, so it's in our best interest that we actually work together and get this computer to run again. So if you don't know what type of a computer I have, I will put something on the top left and the top right where you can see the specifications and a couple of pictures. So basically my computer is really good and usually I have a computer for two to three to maybe four or five years max and then I exchange it with a different one and usually I didn't have these kinds of issues. So for me this is the first time I'm not willing to buy a new computer because it's broken or too slow because this computer is really really good and I'm not willing to give up on it. It was also not a cheap purchase. Now if you clicked on this video in the hopes to get a tutorial and to learn from me then I have to disappoint you. The only way you will learn from these videos is from my mistakes. What I intend to do with this series is maximize my potential to be able to actually fix this computer because if I run into any issues I can just ask all of my subscribers or viewers at least and you guys have given me already so many good suggestions and I'm sure if you see me uh, working on the computer and trying out different things you will have even more ideas probably even better ideas and you can understand what is actually going on and you can help me down in the comments section and hopefully with a couple of videos we will be able to actually wrap this up and fix my computer and get the normal content going again. That would be great. So I'm really looking forward to work together with you. This is actually a really special project for me, you know, something to try out on my channel. Why the heck not? Maybe in the future we are gonna build entire new computers. That would actually be great. I'm really liking this actually. I, I understand the components a lot better now since I've done a lot of research in the past few days and I think we're gonna do a great thing here. Now ultimately if we get this computer to run again of course that's the first priority but if that works I would like to rebuild my entire computer into a different case. So I purchased this entire computer pre-built and I'm not really fond of the case. It, it doesn't feel like good enough quality to me and it's also been in use a little bit and this is why I got the computer cheaper. Okay so with that all out of the way I would say we can actually get into it. The first thing I want to do is actually take all of the covers and the dust filters away from my computer and we are going to attempt to clean it. Now there's a few tools we are going to need over the course of these episodes and probably even more but the tools that you probably want are a screwdriver, uh, preferably uh, one that is magnetic. I don't have one that is magnetic but you know we can deal with it and also one that is modular so you can exchange what head you have on it. Also I recommend you one of those guys in order to cut the zip wires that would be great and also I have this tool right here in order to reach parts that I cannot conveniently reach with my hands. Last but not least since we have the possibility with opening up all of this shebang I also purchased myself a air sprayer I don't know what you guys call that but it's basically shooting air at high velocity and you can very carefully clean up the dust particles that have settled in your computer. Okay with that out of the way let's get this started. So first things first we want to remove all the panels and dust filters. I'm starting with the filter on the top and the left side panel where all the cables are hidden. There's also a dust filter in the front and of course the other side panel where we can sneak peek inside. Last but not least this case has a removable dust filter below the battery. So now we have proper access to everything. We are now going to work and touch delicate parts so we have to keep electrostatic discharge in mind. If we don't want to accidentally shock components in our system we should make sure to be discharged either by touching a tab, a light switch or a PCU that is hooked up to the wall but set to off. Every few minutes we should repeat touching these things while also trying to keep in touch with the metal parts of the case. Before we do anything else I want to make sure my data is safe. To avoid potential damage I'm going to remove both my hard drives from their connection and uninstall them from the case. Once they are not hooked up anymore I can simply take out the individual trays the drives are stored in and put them somewhere safe ready for me to install again. This also gives me better access to parts of the case 
I've never cleaned. Using my air spray, this is a piece of cake to clean. While cleaning any fan, I want to make sure to hold the rotating part in place, otherwise it might spin quicker than intended due to the high velocity of the air coming out of the can. So far, so good. Now it's time to take care of the graphics card. This thing is bulky and makes working inside the case difficult. We can test our new setup also without the graphics card, so it's cool to remove it for now. Now graphic cards usually have two mechanisms to keep them in place. First of all, a bunch of screws or sometimes a plastic mechanism, so we're gonna unscrew that. But secondly, there is mostly a clip you have to release. It's the same clip that snaps into place while putting it in. In my case, I had a little bit of a struggle getting the card out and I had to use a little bit of force, but not too much. Once it's out, I want to make sure I have a secure place for it. The next thing I want to clean is the fan on the top of the case. It's extremely dirty and it's time to get it off to properly clean it with the air sprayer outside the house, because that stuff is going everywhere. If we follow the cable of the fan, we can see that it's controlled by the case itself. I simply have to unhook it to get it off completely. Now it's time to test one of the ideas you guys had. It could be the RAM, which you can see here. Unfortunately, some of the RAM slots are hidden behind the liquid cooler for the heatsink. So we will have to remove this part first. But that is actually a good thing, because I suspect we will be finding plenty of dust in that heatsink. This is going to be the first time I clean it in over a year. Now that I have access to all the RAM modules, I'm going to remove each one individually and replace it firmly in its socket. These slots go very easy, so nothing should feel forced here. Nothing ever should feel forced, they say, but if you ask me, for some people the strength you have to put into unhooking or plugging in certain cables could be interpreted as force. Anyways, you know what I mean, don't break it, man. So once all RAM slots have been reseated, it's possibly time for another booting attempt. You guys also told me that it's a good idea to put one RAM slot in after another and test it every time, but in my case I'm fairly certain the RAM has nothing to do with my issues, for now at least. So I quickly tested my system with the reseated RAM and it didn't change anything. So I attached the liquid cooler again and next I want to replace the CMOS battery. On most motherboards it's a round battery of the size of a coin. What you want to do after you've replaced the CMOS battery is to find the red button to reset the CMOS on your motherboard. You will most likely have to type in a new date and time in the BIOS afterwards. So once I replaced that battery, I did another test that ended in disappointment. That too was not the reason. Alright guys, so at this point I actually wanted to end the episode and ask you guys' advice. Well, what do we do next? Uh, should we try to reinstall the power supply unit or should we exchange it? Etc. Etc. Anyhow, after dinner I really wanted to check out the power supply unit. I couldn't wait any longer, so I did it actually off camera. I just unplugged everything, I had the power unit next to the original tower and I plugged in everything with the new unit and you know what happened? It actually worked again! Hooray! So apparently the power supply unit was really the cause. It was actually the main reason that people listed up, however it is not the easiest thing to do if you have no idea like me. However, this has changed over the course of a week ever since this problem prevented me from uh, booting my computer at all. Now I still don't think the problem is completely resolved and I'm gonna show you why later. So we might still have to do something uh, for which I need you guys' help. However, let me tell you what happened. I basically asked my wife to help me out a little bit and we unscrewed the motherboard and everything. I prepared everything in the new case and most of that footage I actually do not have because there, it was just so delicate. I was doing it for the first time. I was really scared and I asked my wife to give me a hand uh, every now and then. She was for instance holding up the water cooler while I was uh, taking the entire motherboard trying to only touch it on the side and then we put everything into the new computer in order to test it out. I mean, what could go wrong right now? Nothing, right? And there's so few parts. There's just the motherboard with all of the RAM already placed into it. Then there is the liquid cooler for the core. We have a couple of fans. We have two hard drives and one CD drive. What else? There was a USB hub inside the computer and last but not least, yeah, the graphics card and that was basically it. So there's just a few 
parts that I had to drag over and it actually worked out. So that was so much fun. I decided this is the very last computer I'm going to purchase in, in its completeness. I will from now on always build computers because it is so, so much fun, man. I, I just wish I had a worse computer so I could justify buying a new one. You know, at least all the parts, because I mean, I'm gonna take apart old computers of mine and practice on those a little bit. But really, that was a lot of fun, I have to say. I'm glad we did this. However, with that out of the way, let me actually show you also a couple of pictures, how the computer looks, how I've done the cable management. I'm just gonna, you know, put up a couple of pictures or maybe another video in the corner somewhere, I don't know, but you will be able to see uh, the, my computer, which is at the moment completely assembled. There's just one cable, I have no idea where it goes. It is actually a SATA cable that comes from my case, but where the heck does it go? I'm actually also showing it right now, so maybe you can let me know, does that go in the same slot as other drives go? I have no idea. And other than that, the only problem we're at the moment left with is a error that I'm getting when booting up. Every time I'm booting up, it tells me that the overclocking has failed. And it also leads me directly into BIOS. I have to press F1 to get into BIOS. However, when I change anything in the BIOS and I want to save it, then my computer shuts down before it can actually save the new stuff and it just keeps doing on the same thing. It asks me to go into BIOS because overclocking has failed. Now the only way at the moment to circumvent that is to actually go into the boot menu of the BIOS and just tell it the disk where my Windows is on and then I can start the computer no problem. I get into Windows and can do everything else. So let me know, how can I fix this overclocking failure? Uh, in some way or the other we have to do it guys. It's the only error left at the moment and I don't want it to get worse. Do I have to upgrade my BIOS? Do I have to reset my BIOS? Why can I not save any changes in the BIOS? What do I have to do to fix it? But yeah guys, I'm really glad that we could do it in one video, even though I'm now really fancying doing more of these videos. At the moment I just have nothing to build on. But I guess soon enough we could maybe upgrade uh, the PC again with uh, additional SSDs from my other computers and maybe I even get a better graphics card in a few months or so. I don't know. At the moment my computer is really good. There is no real reason to upgrade it other than just to have the best things of the best things. Maybe actually you've seen components in my computer that are not up to par with the rest of the system. You know, I'm open for suggestions. Anyways guys, with that out of the way, I think we're gonna wrap up this episode. Let me know what you think down in the comment section. Did you enjoy this video format? Do you want to see more vlogging type of videos? I'm not sure about what I would do it, but people recently have been suggesting that I attempt things like this and other stuff a little bit more frequently. So, have a great time. Thank you so much for supporting me, for having the patience over these couple of days. There was no content that I regularly do, however, now I think we can do it again, at least as soon as we have fixed the overclocking issue. Alright, see you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.